So today that I'm filming this is officially our last day of school for the first term of second grade with my daughter. And I wanted to share with you guys some hits and misses, what went well, what didn't, and what we're gonna change as we keep moving forward this year. Hey there, welcome to Mile High Homeschool. My name is Megan. If you're new here, I'm a second generation homeschooler and I like to make videos about homemaking and homeschooling that are hopefully encouraging to you in your journey. So I realize you might be saying, Megan, like first term, you're done with your that already. That's really early. Don't stress about it. We're technically year round homeschoolers because we start school much earlier than the majority of people do. And really it's just because I'm hot and don't like being hot in the summer. So we do school when it's really hot outside. So that way we can take more breaks in the fall with the nice weather. Great news is that for the, so the great news is that for the most part, I felt like everything with school this first term went really smoothly. And I really liked the pace of the majority of things. So I don't really have any complaints about anything really. It was more, there was just a couple things scheduling wise that didn't work out. Um, but for the most part, everything was great. So for math, we've been doing a combination of Masterbooks math and Life of Fred. And that's been going really great. My daughter loves Life of Fred. Masterbooks math is a little more teacher intensive, I feel like, than I was looking for. However, we're still able to make it work, so that hasn't been a big deal. With history this year, we're doing Story of the World, the second volume, and that's been good as well so far. Haven't had any complaints about that. For American Sign Language, that's been going really well with the Learn How to Sign subscription that we have and membership. Love that. It's been really cool to see my daughter pick up sign language and then myself as well and be able to sign more, and it's been fun to see her brothers get more excited about using sign language as well, which has been special. Logic of English is going really well. I think for the first time in a long time, I feel like we have a really good pace with it and are actually doing it at a pace where it's not super overwhelming every single day, which is really nice. We've loved read alouds. I think it's my daughter's favorite part of the day is when I'm reading to them. Um, and so I've been, we finished up Charlotte's Web and she loved that. Right now we're reading a book called The Sword and the Tree that a friend of mine lent me. And she's super into it, asks if we can read extra chapters before bed. Like she's really into that one too, which is fun. We do a morning breakfast basket, which has been working really well. I call it a breakfast basket because I'm not sure what else to call it. I really just keep it on our little cart thing that I haul around. But on that, we do our Bible reading, our memory practice. That's when I read aloud to the kids. Um, we're going through the Answers in Genesis Answers for Kids series, and so we do a question out of that each day. We do affirmations, and so all of that has been going really well. The only thing that I really took out of that was we were doing catechism, but I felt like it was just a lot of things for her to try to remember and repeat and stuff all the time with the scripture memory and then also with the affirmations and then the catechism on top of it, and she was kind of getting confused. And so I just decided to cut the catechism part out of it. And then we also do our composer poetry poet and fables those days. Those are just on a loop on Monday through Thursday and then Friday. It's a shorter morning basket because Friday Fridays are fun Friday. So we do less school on Fridays with that. But that's been going really well and I'm very thankful that we're doing that over the breakfast time. It seems about perfect timing and it keeps the kids entertained because they're eating and doing their stuff, but also keeps us on task because they know that they need to be done with breakfast by the time the morning basket is done and then we're ready to go get ready for the day, do chores before we get back together for school. So the last thing that has been going really well that I don't think I talked about doing before was the individual work. And I just got a binder that I already had laying around the house. My daughter decorated it and made her own stickers because she knows I put stickers on my planners. So she put her stickers on it, which I thought was adorable. And basically I just split it into five days and I just like printed these off on Canva, made them and printed them off. And so it's like the five days of the week and then behind each day, I'll put her individual work for the day. And so then she keeps track of it and it's just like, hey, on Monday, do what's in Monday's thing. And so there's usually some cursive copy work. That's where her master books math worksheets are. There's usually like a coloring page or a map work page that has to do with what we read in history the day before. Sometimes there's some journaling stuff that has to do with science from the day before. And then one thing that we started doing that I've really loved is in the front, I will just use a binder clip and clip to this cover what I call her corrections that she needs to make. And so I go through and mark all of her worksheets. Now I'm not hugely focused on grades. <laughs> we don't really do traditional schooling. However, 
as a person, you do need to be able to see where you've messed up and where you succeeded. And so that's why we do these corrections so she can see where she's messed up and where she succeeded. And then I have her go back and correct what needs corrected. And a lot of stuff doesn't need corrected because she does fine. Like she doesn't need to correct her coloring sheets. Like she did a great job. And I'll just write great job and put a sticker on it, you know, that kind of thing. Like the little ego boosts are like, great job on math and that kind of stuff or good job on the spelling or sometimes however with her cursive copy work she will forget to copy a word completely or she'll just skip a word at the bottom of the page because she gets to be in a rush and that kind of thing and so I'll just mark it and be like hey don't forget to mark this one or like there was a while where she was getting her q's and g's mixed up which makes sense like it's an easy one to get mixed up and so I just marked like hey you need to redo these like they were done incorrectly this is how they're supposed to do be done please fix it and so then it gives her a chance to correct her mistakes. Part of that too is because I want her to realize that failing isn't fatal. And like, yeah, you made mistakes, but you can go back and fix it. You can learn from it and do better than next time. It's not the end of the world that you made a mistake or that you missed a math problem or something like that. Like, it just maybe means you need to focus more. We need to review something. Maybe you were in a rush. Maybe we just got distracted and forgot about it. Maybe mom didn't explain it well. Mistakes aren't the end of the world. Failure isn't the end of the world. Certainly making one or two mistakes on a page is not like, oh my gosh, you're failing in math. But like, I want her to see those mistakes and give her the opportunity to correct them because I feel like that's an opportunity um, that a lot of parents miss is giving their kids the chance to correct their own mistakes. So really the only things that didn't go great this first term or that I felt just weren't working right. The main one was science because with science, the way that the syllabus initially has it set up is that you do all the reading on one week and then you do all the projects the next week. And I get why they do that because they want you to have time and focus and not make every day drag out really long and that kind of thing. However, the problem is that it has been so much reading each day, or at least it feels like a lot of reading each day. Now remember, this is the initial syllabus had it broken into two days a week, and I split the reading into four days a week. But it is just so much reading. And by the end of the day, like in school, my voice is already so tired from reading aloud because we read aloud for math, and we read aloud for history, and then we're reading aloud for science, and we read aloud and talk about ASL, and we talk about logic of English. And so it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of talking. I'm so tired of reading. And then the week when it's the science experiments, it just feels like it's so much project to do every day of like, oh my gosh, this is just an insane amount of project work every day. And so I think what I'm going to do in moving forward is split it up over the two weeks and have it be two weeks of reading and oh, in those same two weeks do the projects. And so have it be less reading each day and smaller projects each day. And then I think that's going to work out a lot smoother. The last thing that really caused the biggest trouble or just like rocked the boat the most in this last term was honestly that I needed to get a better handle of my schedule in the mornings. I am not a morning person. I fully admit that. It is not my favorite thing to get up early. I'm usually very tired, <laughs> even with trying to go to bed early. Right now, I'm just in a phase of life where I'm just super tired all the time. And so I just really need to get a better handle on my mornings. And then I know that the school day will go a lot smoother. So over this next two week break, I'm really going to buckle down for myself to get my mornings and schedule and routine under control. So that way, as we move into the next term of school, that will be more settled and be working a lot better because as the mom and as the teacher, it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm starting my day off on the right foot so I can help my kids start their days off on the right foot. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys and yeah, gave you some ideas of maybe things you can watch out for in your schedule. I'd love to hear what your hits and misses are throughout your school year. See you next week. Thanks.